Welcome to the seventh teach-in at the University of Oklahoma. I'm David Robel, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce the interim president of the University of Oklahoma, Joseph Harris, Jr. Uh, interim President Harris has served at the university for nearly 25 years in a variety of roles, including vice president for executive affairs, general counsel, and dean of the College of Law. In May 2019, the OU Board of Regents named him interim president. Please join me in welcoming OU Interim President Joe Harris, Jr. All right, we're off to a fast start. Um, happy Daylight Savings Time Day. That's right. We're the ones that set our alarm clocks to the right number. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Uh, thanks to Dean Rebell uh, for all that he does and certainly for having this. Uh, we're thrilled to have with us, uh, actually to have this day, to have uh, this day after a two-year break in having the teach-in. Uh, by a show of hands, how many have made past teach-ins? Oh, fantastic. Right. We just bring them back, don't we? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Would you be with me all day long? It would help me out to have you around all day long, being supportive. Uh, that'd be terrific. Um, I, I do want to thank, uh, for those of you all who have not met them, I want to thank uh, Rod and Nancy Sanders. They have the Horizon Foundation. Uh, they live in Plano, Texas. And since the inception of this in 2012, uh, they have been the benefactors who have made this possible. And they weren't able to be here today, um, but what they do has an impact on all of us. Certainly we're all here for that reason. So. Even in their absence, let's give them a round of applause, please. Uh, so you all know this. Over the years, we've attracted some of the leading scholars, practitioners, commentators to discuss uh, the social and political events that have shaped and are shaping uh, the American heritage. Topics in the past have included our nation's founding, the Great Depression, the Civil War, the Western Frontier, uh, and so many more. These are hosted by a really unique entity that we all know, which is the Institute for the American Constitutional Heritage. Uh, the impact it's had uh, is stunning, and we are grateful uh, for them and what they've done. Uh, oftentimes at these events, it makes me reflect about the excitement of being at, you know, it, it, the fact of being at a university. And I heard a quote recently um, that came from, it was a memorial for a University of Chicago professor talking about what it means to be a university. And I thought it would be a nice thing to read uh, that sets the stage for, for all that we do. And this was the quote given at this memorial. Unlike any other institution in society, the university is a bastion of intellectual pursuit, where the search for truth is unfettered, where the life of the mind is nourished, where ideas are debated and refined and deepened, and where the conversation about what is true and beautiful and good continues from generation to generation. Right? And I just love that. And I think the teaching itself uh, is a perfect example of that, right? It crosses um, generational divides, as you can see in this room, although we shouldn't have all the students separated. Um, we're glad the students are here. Uh, and I'm told there are a few more busloads coming in. Uh, but it brings people all together under this common goal, uh, under a focused topic uh, for an in-depth discussion. And, and again, one more quote, and then I will turn this over to the experts here in just a minute. Although I'm kind of enjoying this, so it might last a while. Uh, the, second, the second quote was from a student. Uh, she was a student at the time at the University of Oklahoma uh, when the last teach-in had to be canceled, uh, resulting in the two-year hiatus and this occurring, uh, that drought being ended today. Uh, but this is what she wrote in the student paper. It was published in 2017. Uh, she noted that going to the teach-in, uh, these are her words, is like Christmas. Uh, and she was sad to learn it had been put off. Uh, and she said, but this March, Christmas isn't coming. She went on to describe a personal experience she had at a previous teach-in, and she wrote this. Personally, the teach-in has vastly impacted my education at OU. Last year, by chance, I happened to sit next to an older man, roughly 85 years old, during two lectures. In between speakers, he struck, we struck up a conversation about both of our lives. He told me about how he had served as a, as a federal judge for much of his life, which was fascinating to an aspiring lawyer. He spoke about his favorite case, the best parts of being a judge, what it took to crack in 
the legal field. We discussed our shared love of our shared love for history and the Constitution. He was a lifetime conservative, and I am just the opposite. Yet we formed a bond across age divides, ideological gaps, and expertise levels. I frequently think about the words of advice he left me. Right? And what this student, what, what uh, Elena perfectly summed up, is what this event is all about. Right? It, about the personal, meaningful interactions that are taking place, uh, about passing down of wisdom, uh, not just down but across and up, of wisdom that comes to us, and of course the celebration of the free exchange of ideas. Uh, this is the purpose of the teach-in. Uh, it is what we want to be as a university. Public intellectual events like this um, are not just important to a university. To me, they're at the heart of a university. Right? It's not just transmitting knowledge and information one way. Uh, it, is, it is coming across. And it's also the idea that we hear from diverse points of view and that we listen to each other and think deeply. Right? That we move in a way that involves civil discourse, right? Of all the threats to society that exist, when you look at the greatest threats to our Constitution and to democracy, and if you aren't very attentive right now, I'll give you the whole speech, and it lasts about 50 minutes. So if you're focused, you've got like 90 seconds left. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it's much longer, and I'm just close to doing it. When we really talk about what threatens our democracy, what threatens our democracy is not engaging in honest and civil discourse about talking about what makes us different and understanding each other, not being persuaded necessarily by a different political ideology, but being able to receive it and understand it and to form those human bonds that connect us and to help us realize that our diversity in all of its ways has to be a strength for us to be successful, but it doesn't have to be a strength. It can be the wedge that drives us apart and divides us for good and destroys our democracy. And so your attendance here today and the purpose of this event itself is to show who we can be as a society. Right? It's to model, to model for those that we help lead, that watch us in society, to model what it means to be together, to explore controversial topics, to unpack them, unwrap them, understand the basis for them, and then to hear both sides and then forge for ourselves not just our own belief, which hopefully is ever evolving, but just as importantly, maybe more importantly, an understanding of each other. And so it's a thrill to be here today. I'm told we're going to have a couple hundred more show up. Those are the folks that did not set their alarms and adjust them yesterday. Um, but we're thrilled that you're here. Uh, thank you for being such an important part of our university and this community. Thank you. You know, in some ways, it's been a difficult uh, year or so for the university, and, and uh, interim president Joe Harris has really helped uh, hold us together and move us forward. I think we're deeply grateful for that. So thank you, President Harris. I'd like to introduce the director of the Institute for American Constitutional Heritage, Justin Wirt. Welcome to the 2020 Teach-In. I'm Justin Word. I'm the director for the Institute of the American Constitutional Heritage here at OU, and I'm also in the Department of Political Science. At OU, we believe that providing students in our larger community with the tools to study the events that helped shape America, that helped shape America's heritage will help ensure our nation's future. And it was with that belief that we developed the Teach-In uh, many years ago in 2012. And as President Harris said, we've only had to skip it once or twice over its tenure. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about our institute, the Institute for the American Constitutional Heritage. We're an interdisciplinary center here at OU. Uh, we offer a minor and a concentration in constitutional studies. We're one of the few universities in the country to offer that to undergraduates. Uh, and we are interdisciplinary. So we look at the Constitution not just from a legal perspective, 
we look at it from a political perspective, historical perspective, and cultural perspectives. So we're really unique in that as well, and we're very lucky at OU to have a group of faculty throughout the College of Arts and Sciences, of course in the law school, in the business school, uh, that come together, offer courses um, in constitutional studies from their own departments. Uh, and we're really, really lucky uh, to have them. And if you want more information about the IACH, you can certainly see me, uh, or you can go to ou.iach.edu. Uh, but I would love to talk to anybody about it for as long uh, as they want to. Um, just a few things. Um, there will be a document, a showing of the river and the wall tonight at Sam Noble Museum at 5 o'clock. Uh, I'll do a little introduction of that. Uh, just to give you an idea, the New York Times recently uh, called it a passionate and spectacularly uh, photographed documentary. Uh, so it should be really interesting, and I'm excited uh, about that. Again, that'll be 5 o'clock uh, in Sam Noble. And just a note on the format today, uh, our panelists will be introduced by uh, a member of the OU faculty, and then they'll give a talk for about 30 minutes. So we'd like to have you hold any questions that you might have until after they're done. We'll have plenty of time for Q&A about 20 minutes, and we'll have undergraduates walking around, uh, I hope, uh, with microphones, uh, so everybody will be able to hear uh, your questions, and certainly the panelists will be able uh, to answer them. And we're doing this in 50-minute blocks so we can accommodate uh, our faculty and our undergraduates um, whose class schedules match that. So what we're going to do is take a little break now so we can start exactly at 9.30. All right. Thanks, and enjoy the teaching.